Hi, I'm Rachel Barton Pine. And I'm Sylvia. And we're going to be cooking one of our very favorite meals. Um, peanut butter mush, which has been um, renamed for this occasion, peanut butter delight. Peanut butter mush sounds a little, um, a little like home. Yeah, it could be peanut butter glop, because that's what it kind of looks like. But we're going to call it peanut butter delight. Delight. <laughs> I actually invented this when I was a teenager. Um, I used to eat peanut butter sandwiches all the time because when I would be out all day at rehearsals and lessons and stuff, um, peanut butter sandwiches were a convenient thing to have with me to eat, you know, even if I didn't have a cold pack, they wouldn't go bad um, too quickly. And I loved the taste of peanut butter sandwich with banana, but the problem is if you put slices of banana on the peanut butter sandwich, it would just all bloop out. It was a big mess. And you could like have the banana in one hand and the sandwich in the other and try to take a bite of each, but that was also just too much work. So one day when I was home, um, I just decided to give up and I put the blooped sandwich in a bowl and I finished mashing it up and thus was born the peanut butter delight. Or so, peanut butter mush. Yeah, exactly. So we're, we have our normal elements of a peanut butter sandwich, which are peanut butter, Okay, let's put some peanut butter in there. Do you want to get out the nut that you want, or do you want me to scoop it up for you? I'll get some. Okay. Um, that's a lot of peanut butter. All right, a nice bloop. A nice bloop. Um, okay. And, the... Yep, have as much as you want. And so much peanut butter. <laughs> okay. You know, I might even call that peanut butter bloop. All right, that's probably, yeah, you don't want it too sticky. Okay. All right, there we go. And... Honey, um, you could also use maple syrup if you want a change of pace. You can't do that on a sandwich, so this can actually go beyond. By deconstructing your sandwich, it opens up the possibilities. So what we're going to do, traditional honey right now, this one's almost empty. Do you want to finish off the almost empty one? See how much is left in there? I'm going to start the new one. And then, so I'd like some of the new one too. Yep, yeah, that almost empty one probably doesn't quite have enough. All right. It definitely so there's, doesn't have enough. It's not even coming out. Okay, well, yeah, we can worry about that later. All right, here's some of the new one. There we go. And then the banana. Now I've got three bananas here. I normally don't like to eat a plain banana when it's this overripe. I know everybody's got different tastes in bananas, but you know, this is kind of the point at which you would make banana bread, but they work great when they're this ripe um, for peanut butter delight. Um, in fact, they work at any ripeness for peanut butter delight. You just don't have to mash them quite as much for, oh, look at that, you're already ahead of me. All right, so you definitely want at least one banana, but if you're feeling particularly banana-ish, you could actually use one and a half bananas. Or if I, you need a lot of food, two. Yeah, so what do you think, Sylvia? Should I give you one and a half or one? Just one for me right now. Okay, all right, and one for me. This is pretty ooey, gooey. Yeah, this is really Luckily, cool. I thought ahead and I brought a peanut butter sandwich um, wash up to the table with this paper towel. Well, I'm having All a right. little time with this, and my fingers haven't gone any. Okay, so now we have to mush it up. Um, yep, just smash it with the spoon, stir it up, and then you can actually add some cinnamon. So, you want to put in your own cinnamon? After I finish this banana. Okay. And you can even use like other cake spices, um, like, I don't know, allspice, cardamom, cardamom? cloves. Cardamom? Uh, cardamom, that's right. <laughs> you, you literally just said cardamom. Well, it is called cardamom. Um, Wait, really? Cardamom? Yes. <laughs> Anyways, my favorite is nutmeg. Maybe that's because it's such an 18th century thing, like a dash of nutmeg in your mold wine. But anyways, I'm going to put just very sparingly, because it's pretty strong, a little nutmeg in mine. Um, oh yes, so put in as much cinnamon as you want. Uh, now that we've got our basic mash, I'm going to say mash because it sounds better than mush, um, this mash ready to go, now it's time to add in the grain. Now when I first started making deconstructed sandwiches, I thought, well, sandwich, that means slices of bread. So I would either rip up into crouton-sized bits a couple of slices of bread, or I would toast them and have crunchy bits, depending on what mood I was in. But sometimes Actually, we run out of bread. Exactly. Sometimes, these days, the stores run out of bread. We have a great recipe from Desiree of how to make your own bread, which you and Dad have actually done. But um, now the stores are running out of yeast. Go figure. 
So if you don't have bread or if you want to change your pace, you can use puffed grains. I've got some puffed amaranth over here, which works really, really well. Um, we've used puffed millet, um, puffed wheat, um, any of those kinds of puffed grains. I've never tried it with puffed corn, but I don't see why that wouldn't work. You can use whole grain flaked cereal. Um, but my favorite is sprouted grains. And I normally don't even get to sprout anything because, you know, we get back from one orchestra and then we're home for a couple of days and we would start the sprouts growing and then like by the time the sprouts would be almost ready to eat, we'd be leaving for the next orchestra. So the timing rarely works out. But now that we're home, we get to sprout as much as we want. So I got this super easy sprouting kit because I do not have a green thumb. Um, it's like foolproof from this place called Sprout People. And it's this outer part and this inner part. Basically, we take some, some grains, and we'll talk about that in a sec, um, some of these sprouting seeds, and we do it with legumes also, like garbanzos, aduki beans, um, peas. So you take these grains and you fill it up just about like a quarter of the way and then you fill it the rest of the way almost to the brim with some filtered water, uh, put on the lid and let it sit for about 12 hours. doesn't have to be exact. Like if you, you know, fill it up before you go to bed and the next morning you dump it out, be sure to hold the lid so it doesn't all fall apart. And then you take this inner part and you put it um, like so it sticks out ever so slightly. There's little thingies on here that help you do that. And then you put the lid back on so dust doesn't get in there. And you basically let it sit around. Um, and it gets hairier and hairier as the sprouts are growing. So now we have these very hairy grains. You want to grab a handful of those? Hairy, um, hairy, hairy. Yep, hairy grains. They're so cool. And the thing about sprouts is the same grains that you would eat like dried or, you know, boiled or for legumes, you know, canned or, you know, dried and, and reconstituted they have so much more nutrients when they're sprouted. So it's the same amount of food, but like so many more nutrients, which is awesome. Um, and they even taste yummy just to eat a few. Okay, so we can take these sprouted grains and mix them into our peanut butter delight. So basically it's like Ezekiel bread, except nobody ever bothered to make it into bread. It's just the sprouted grains. Oh yeah, we were gonna tell you about these grains. So this is one of the many things that sprout people has and it's our favorite. It's called Amber Waves of Grain. And listen to all these grains that are in there. It has wheat, rye, oats, hamut, sesame, millet, amaranth, and quinoa. And we don't really know how hamut is pronounced, but... Yeah, is it kamut? Is it? I, I'm not sure. But anyways, um, it's an ancient grain. Nice. Yeah, so be, don't, be careful that you... Yep, dump it carefully. All right. Um, so you can add other things, too. Since we're mushing it all up, you can add many more things that you would never be able to really put on a sandwich. I love to add seeds, because again, they've got lots of nutrients, protein, stuff like that. Um, you can get chia seeds, either just the normal chia seeds or these ground up chia seeds. It's called chia protein powder, but all it is is ground up chia seeds. And actually, the store appears to be out of normal chia seeds and we ran out, so now, good thing I had this powder. So a little drizzle of that, a little for you. And actually, the powder is kind of good because the seeds do tend to get stuck in your teeth anyways. Wait, hey. Oh. All right. And then we've got um, ground up flax or normal flax seeds. Which kind do you want? The ground up flax or the normal flax seeds? Um, Pick quick. Um, normal. Okay. Normal, normal flax seeds it is. All right. So grab a pinch of those. You can add that. Stir it up. And... It's like dangling together. Yep. How can that be? <laughs> I don't know. You could add sesame seeds. You could add hemp. Hemp has a very distinctive and strong taste. I happen to love it. I also love the fact that it's complete protein. It's like one of the healthiest things that you can add to your diet or your kid's diet. Um, but, you know, maybe try just a little pinch of it with one bite of your peanut butter delight before committing to stirring it all the way through in case you don't like it. Um, well, there was only smooth peanut butter at the store when we went to the store, and we normally like the crunchy variety. So luckily, I have some, some actual peanuts here, so we can add a few of those for some added crunch. These are these really awesome um, organic raw wild jungle peanuts. They're supposedly from Brazil, and they're like the ancient variety of peanuts from which modern peanuts were derived. They look really cool. They're like this beautiful dark brown, they're, they're stripey basically, which is pretty funky. Like this. Yep. Do you want any in your mix? Oh, no? Thank you. All right. You can even add other nuts. 
Maybe you could add, sprinkle in some walnuts. Actually, you don't even have to use peanut butter. You could use almond butter or whatever you feel like. Um, and you can even add other kinds of fruit. Well, of course, peanut butter and jelly is a thing. You could make this with jelly instead of the maple syrup or honey. You could add some blueberries. Mm. You could add some raisins. Where did my raisins go? I'm not sure where my raisins went. But anyways, um, you can really be creative with it. And, well, you're already eating it, aren't you? No, I haven't. I only oh. ate a peanut. Oh, okay. Well, do you want to take a bite, see how your mush turned out? Yeah, may I have a little bit, a few blueberries? Oh, definitely. All right, so let's put some of those blueberries in there. Yum. Get the stem off of that one. Okay, well, that's all I can think of to tell you. It's not necessarily the most aesthetic looking thing in the world. It kind of looks like, you know, brown glop, but it tastes like dessert and it has all the nutrients of a full meal with your protein and your whole grains and all kinds of good stuff. So I hope you enjoy.